Hi and welcome back to Catholic Mom and Daughter. I'm Jennifer and this is Kate and today we're really excited to share with you a great Catholic book find and it's this book, The Woman in the Trees by Theone Bell. And it tells the amazing story of the first and only approved Marian apparition to take place in the United States, which is Our Lady of Good Help, which occurred in Champion, Wisconsin in 1859. You know, there are something like over 2,000 or 2,500 Marian apparitions that have been approved worldwide, but only one in the United States. So we finally got one. And with everything going on in the world right now, we definitely think we could use some extra help from Mary. So let's get started. So, Our Lady of Good Help. Maybe you have heard of this apparition, but maybe you haven't. It's definitely not as well known as, say, Lourdes or Fatima, which is why we're so excited to have a whole book about it. Yes, I was a little fuzzy on all the details of this apparition until I read the book. So if you haven't heard of Our Lady of Good Help, don't feel bad. Today we're going to catch you up on all the details. So the story starts in October of 1859 in the woods by Champion, Wisconsin where the Blessed Mother appeared several times to a young woman named Adèle Brisse, who was a Belgian immigrant. As a child in Belgium, Adèle and her friends at the time of their First Communion had made a vow that when they grew up they would be missionaries and teach the Catholic faith. After that, her family immigrated to America, but as a young woman in 1859, she just kind of hadn't gotten around to keeping that vow about teaching the faith. So the Blessed Mother took that matter into hand, and she appeared to Adele to remind her of her promise. And she asked her to gather the children living in the rural woods of Wisconsin and to teach them how to pray, how to make the sign of the cross, and teach them their catechism. And when the Blessed Mother appeared, she was, as usual, very beautifully dressed. She was wearing a dazzling white robe with a golden sash, and there was a crown of stars around her head. And I just love how beautifully the Blessed Mother dresses for these apparitions. We might have to do a whole video on that. But in any case, it is always very difficult to say no to the beautiful Mother of God. So Adele immediately responded and she set out to teach the children, often at great sacrifice. She would walk for miles through rough terrain or snow to reach the farms where the children lived. And she would even help them with their chores to free up time to learn. And not everybody was very happy to see her either, but she persevered and her story started to spread. And eventually, there was a small chapel built at the apparition site. And then, of course, miracle stories started rolling in. But probably one of the greatest miracles that happened there was in 1871, just 12 years later. And that was when the Great Peshtigo Fire broke out. Wisconsin at this time had been undergoing a severe drought. So everything was super dry and ready to go up in flames. Close to 2,500 people died in this fire, and it burned through 1.5 million acres. But the locals who fled to the chapel grounds of Our Lady of Good Help survived. And that is truly astonishing because the fire came right up to the fence that surrounded the grounds. Yeah, so they were surrounded on all sides by this raging fire. But inside the fence, the people were on their knees praying the rosary and begging Our Lady for her intercession. And right as the fire was about to cross the fence, a huge thunderstorm broke out. There was heavy rain and the fire was just put out. That was a true miracle. So it's a wonderful story, and that is where the woman in the trees comes in. It is a great way to learn about this apparition. It's written as historical fiction, and it covers the apparition, it covers the fire and the miracle, and it's told through the eyes of a young girl named Slaney, whose family had come over to Wisconsin from Belgium several years earlier. So older kids, say middle school on up, could read this book on their own, but it would also make a really good family read aloud. So kids will definitely like it, but so will adults, which is one of the many things that we really like about this book. 
And another thing that we enjoyed is that the book has the Civil War as a backdrop for part of it. And we've been studying the Civil War recently for history, so it was really cool how that kind of lined up with our schoolwork. Yeah, we didn't know it at the time, but it just meshed, which is it's always really cool when that happens. Okay, another thing that I thought was really neat is that the author did meticulous research for this book. In the back, there is a whole section. She explains all the research she did online and in person and all the work that went into it and how she was inspired to write this book. So that's kind of like a bonus that I really enjoyed. And let's also take a minute to appreciate the stunning cover art on this book, like this image is gorgeous. Yes, we both love this picture. So you all know how I feel about books with ugly artwork. I'm thinking of you books from the 1970s. So The Woman in the Trees definitely gets bonus points for all its beautiful artwork. And as a fun little side note for any Little House on the Prairie fans out there, this apparition was going on in the same time frame as and actually very close by to the setting of Little House in the Big Woods. So it's crazy to think that the Blessed Mother was appearing not very far from Laura Ingalls and her family. That would have been wild if Laura Ingalls had seen the Blessed Mother, but that's not, yeah, that didn't happen. But anyway, the story of Slaney's family and the fire and the intercession of the Blessed Mother, it kept us on the edge of our seats, but we don't want to go into too much detail because we don't want to spoil for you how it all went down. <laughs> so we greatly enjoyed reading this book and we learned a lot but not just about the apparition. You can learn so much about the pioneer life in the late 1800s. The author puts lots of detail into her book and it really makes that time period come alive. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that as a catechist, this book really hit me hard. When the Blessed Mother appeared and told Adele to go and teach the little ones, Adele took that very seriously and she immediately went and started traveling around all by herself through the scary woods and bad weather through the snow to do this job. And it made me realize how much Mary values the work of teaching the faith and how important that work really is. But we also know that teaching catechism isn't always easy or fun. No, and it's not always easy to get people who want to teach catechism because, you know, maybe people think, well, it's not a convenient time for me to teach or I can't teach or I don't like the book or the program or whatever. But this book was a really good lesson for me. It doesn't matter what I like. It doesn't matter if I don't like the book or if it's not exactly convenient. What matters is that we need to teach our children the faith. And Jesus did say, go and make disciples of all nations. And the Blessed Mother is still doing that. She's not taking a break just because she's in heaven. That's right. She always shows us the way. So all in all, we definitely enjoyed this book. And if you haven't heard of Our Lady of Good Help or The Woman in the Trees, then here you go. We wanted to help spread the word. If you've read the book or you have experience with Our Lady of Good Help, maybe you've been to the shrine or the chapel, leave us a comment down below. We would love to hear about it. And I'm just thinking out loud here, but I think this would be a really good book to put in Easter baskets this year. So Our Lady of Good Help, pray for us, pray for our world, especially those suffering in Ukraine. Thank you so much for watching today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.